In this video, I'm going to be going over setting up your Linux environment to be able to connect to uh, SQL Server. Now, there are some steps that need to be done before this, and mostly it's just actually downloading the ODBC driver. I will have a link below that points straight to SQL Server's page, so then you can download the ODBC driver. And the nice thing is that they do provide a script that you can just simply use and it will download the ODBC driver, set up your environment variables that are needed. And then from there, you can go on to this step. Now, as you can see here, I'm using Ubuntu. I do know there are other flavors of Linux. And some things might change, but at least for this one, it's going to be on Ubuntu, setting up the database connection to SQL Server. So now that that's been addressed, there are two things that we really need to focus on for the ODBC section of this. This is gonna be the more complex one. The JDBC part of it is very straightforward. But on this one, we're dealing with two different files. It's gonna be the ODBC any and then the ODBC ins.ini. Now, just to show you where this is, I'm gonna open up a new window. And here, if I do CD forward slash OPT, and if I do LS, Actually, wrong one. CD slash, I think it's ETC LS. Here we go. So in the ETC um, folder, you're going to see ODBC any and ODBC instat any. Now, if you do sudo nano and then ODBC dot any then uh, you'll be able to get to the screen that sees here. Sudo just gives you the permission to be able to change the file. Nano is actually just opening up basically like a text editor to then change any of the values inside of this file. So let's just focus on this first one. So the ODBC any is your DSN file. So what that just means is that this is going to contain all the information to connect to a specific database. So the syntax of how this works is basically in brackets, you're going to have the SQL server one, and that's just a name I gave to the DSN. This could be any kind of name. I just recommend giving it a, a name that gives context to what database you're connecting to, because you might have multiple ones and it's easier to know by looking at it being like, oh, okay, this connects to my testing environment, my production environment, what have you. Now, down below, we have some other parameters, and this one's going to be called driver, and then you can see it's called it's equal to driver SQL server. Now, this value here connects to this file that's over here, the odbc ints.ini file. Now, this file right here, all it deals with is pointing to where your odbc driver is at. And if you can see, the syntax of this is very similar. So in brackets, we have the name of the driver. You can give a description so then you know what driver this is for what kind of database or for what version. And then driver is going to actually point directly to where that driver location is at. Now this one, if you simply just ran the script that SQL Server provides, you'll find the same information. The only thing that might be different is some of the version information. So I'm um, at the time of recording, I'm dealing with driver 18, so this might be different, and so is the ending of this file. But this is gonna be the general same location. So in order for this connection to work, it needs to know which driver to use, because as you can see, I have one for SQL Server, and I also have one for Oracle. So in order for the connection to work, it needs to know what is the correct driver to use. So that's why these two, this value, and this parameter link these two files together. And then the rest of it's pretty simple. Uh, what is the server? You can use you know, the naming, or if you just wanna use the IP address like I did here, I did here. Um, we have the port number where it's listening and the specific database I'm trying to connect to. Now with SQL Server, by default on the newer drivers, encryption is set um, to yes by default. And since this is just simply doing a simple connection with not, nothing encrypted, I am setting it to no. And the last one, trace, is equal to yes. Uh, trace is just some logging information, which is really helpful in the beginning when you're trying to set up the connections, because we'll use a command called ISQL to test the connection. 
and sometimes it'll just tell you that it didn't connect with no real context so this trace is helpful for that and since we kind of already touched on it the odpc inst file is just pointing to that driver so the most important thing is just to have these two set up the way that you see here of course there are um, additional parameters for anything you're trying to do like for encryption also too you'll see like i have oracle down here below so each database has its own parameter so make sure you look at the documentation from the given database about what is needed for your odpc.in file um, the odpc ints i have not seen it really change it's always just pointing to where the driver is located but now that we have that part done now we're going into workbench and in workbench we're going to do a quick check so we see the blue icon here at the very top i'm going to hit down the drop down menu that's the iri menu i'm going to hit iri preference hit the twisty on iri connection registry i'm going to hit the twisty on that one and hit database connection if you don't see anything here you can always hit refresh but basically what you want to see you want to see that your new dsn connection is popping up so as you can see here it says sql server one and if i just hit cancel and minimize this sql server one so this is the information that it's pulling from and if we want to make sure that the odpc connection is working what we can do is do this command isql and what we're going to do is the name of the dsn so sql server one and the password or the credentials so Goso Sorco 78 and if I hit enter now I am connected and I'm able to do some SQL commands from here so it's just a quick and easy way to know is my ODPC connection up and running so now that we have that part done the next thing is to set up the JDBC driver now the jdbc driver is a lot more simple all you have to do is go on sql server's website download the jdbc driver and just make sure you know where you place that what i did is come down here to my documents i just made a folder jdbc driver and sql server i unzipped the tar that they give me and within this directory it's kind of a couple lo levels deep you'll see a folder called jars and in there, you'll see um, the latest jar files that you can grab. And they're basically broken down between, you know, JRE 8, JRE 11. I would just use this at the time of recording, the JRE 11 version. So as long as you know where that path is, wherever you decide to unzip it, what we're going to do is go into Workbench. And I'm going to do a new connection, so a new connection profile. And we're going to scroll down to the database that we want to connect to. Again, here in the name, you can change this name. Just make sure it has context to what you're connecting to. I'm just going to leave it as new SQL Server for now. Because I already have a connection profile, this is what pops up. But what you're going to see if you're doing something new for the first time is this. So we're just going to specify the system version that we're connecting to. And I'm going to then hit the tab over here to the jar list. And this is where I'm going to point to where my jar is at. So I'm going to go to documents, JDBC, SQL Server, jars, and then point to this one. I'm going to hit open. Since I already created one, I can change this name. So, And then we're going to hit OK. And I'm going to hit cancel here because this is what you're going to see. And let me pop up this connection profile since it already has information in there. So let's make this a little bit bigger. What we're going to do is the database, we're going to give it the name. So I'm connecting to what we call RRI testing. Uh, and then the host number, I'm just, or host name. I'm just going to put the IP address, the port number that's listened to. Then, uh, of course, you can use uh, integrated authentication. But if not, I'm just going to pass the username and then password. I'm going to save the password. And here's the other important step. If we come up here to the optional tab, um, you can come up here and type encrypt. 
equals false. And that's because we don't have an encrypted connection and hit add. And then you should see it down here below. So once you have that, we're going to go back to general. And as you can see down here below, it creates our connection URL. So it has all the information, encrypt equals false, and then now we can hit test connection. And if ping succeeded, that means we are able to connect to the database and we're going to hit apply and close. So now, if I double click, I should be seeing my database, the schemas available to me, and what are the tables within them. And just to make sure, I can right click on it, hit data, I'm going to hit sample contents, and I can see the values inside. And then last but not least, if we're going to go back up here to IRI preferences, hit the drop down to IRI, connection registry, database connection, and then for SQL Server, I'm going to hit edit. Uh, bit version is going to be 64. Add the connection information. So go sort and then the password and then what we can do here is encrypt this information so then that's not stored in plain text and I'm going to map this to my SQL Server demo so what we ended up doing here is basically saying since we have two different um, connections because Workbench uses the JDBC connection to get the metadata and our executable executable code sort is written in C so it has to use the ODBC connection it makes a mapping so when we end up creating scripts we know whenever we're dealing with this connection profile we need to use this ODBC connection so then that way the scripts work for the executable so I'm going to hit OK I'm going to make sure it's active and I'm going to hit apply and close and now you're all set to go. You have both your ODBC and your JDBC connections up and running, and you have them mapped together, so now you can start doing some scripts and any jobs you need.